We're back. Why? <laughs> How? <laughs> <sighs> I'm Adam Manis. And I'm Peter Martin. And you're listening to the You'll Hear Podcast. Daily jazz advice still coming at you. Always coming at you, bro. On. Come on. They, we can't be held down. It's not going to stop. We're an unstoppable force. You and, didn't buy any of that, did you? No. And we have nothing better to do. And we That's tried to happened. be <laughs> We tried to be confident with it. Yeah. I, I don't know. We probably didn't fool anybody. I don't know. I mean, can you please let us know? Because we have no... Uh, okay, first of all... Happy April Fool's Day. A Obviously. Day yeah, Obviously, yeah. that was, you know, we love doing the podcast. We're, we're here to stay. And um, that was not the last podcast episode yesterday. For those of you that are just joining the podcast for the first time today, you don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> but we did a whole thing about how it was our final episode. Of what, if, what if someone tuned in yesterday for the first time? They would be so <laughs> like, what? Well, it was a pretty good episode. It was so actually least, a great episode. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I mean, we had some talk around toot here. our own horn, but yeah, exactly. Not our greatest, but it was good. It was solid. <laughs> it was a solid B. Um, well, that should have clued people off, like that it wasn't like our greatest. Ever. I mean, you know, if when we do go off, we're going to go out with a bang. Yeah, that was definitely going out with a whimper. Like, come on, <laughs> but Root shell pretty? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I know, but I mean, we also like. I, I don't know. We we played it pretty chill, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. But um, we did have some talk amongst the staff here about whether or not there would the, the they would be like a cliff of listenership. It just totally like people are like, oh, it's done. Okay, cool. All right, and then never even Finally. check it. Yet. So maybe nobody's <laughs> listening to this. That's okay too. <laughs> it's all good. All right. So what are we talking uh, about today? Back on our official. Uh, uh, well, today we're talking Tuesday. about uh, the Oxford American. The Oxford American is a magazine dedicated to documenting the complexity and vitality of the American South. Its award winning annual music issue comes with a CD sampler and digital download. It's a must have for any serious music fan. Recent issues have featured Nina Simone, Thelonious Monk, John Cage and John Coltrane. Mm. Visit OxfordAmerican.org slash YHI today. Can't say enough about the Oxford American. Right. And hopefully they're staying with us. <laughs> they didn't think we were falling off. But well, I we believe, had to include them in the farce. That's right. You know, I believe their newest uh, episode is just hitting newsstands too. I heard it's like, true, even, like any day now. But you'll hear it, listeners. Go to that link that we just said, OxfordAmerican.org/yhi, and subscribe yeah. because you're going to get a whole year's worth for beautiful. I mean, truly book-like, yeah. worthy it, it, of being it, bound into a library. Um, ver, uh, epi uh, episodes. Um, uh, what That's what we do. Publications. <laughs> uh, um, Throughout the year, for the for just a couple dollars more, including shipping and everything, That's that you awesome. would to get one at the airport. It's awesome. Pick one up at the airport too if you want. If you're yeah. if you're a high roll of big baller, but um, yeah, pick it up today. Well, today we we have another speak pipe, and we have another speak pipe from one of our regular speak pipe uh, users, uh, Zoom from Vancouver. Oh, one of our one of our regular and one of our best ever. I, I mean, he always has great questions. Yeah, so. normally we wouldn't revisit somebody as as much as we do, but he he brings the fire every time. All right, here it is. Seven stars for him. Hey, guys. This is Zoom from Vancouver. Great podcast, as always. Uh, I'm wondering if you guys could do an episode on sus chords or suspended chords uh, and concentrate on that, talk about the different functions they can have, talk about different ways to voice them, uh, talk about how to solo over them, some good examples of tunes with sus chords that you like, uh, and also maybe uh, settle a little debate about whether or not you can use the third in a voicing of a sus chord. All right. Thanks so much, and I hope I'll hear it. Yeah, we talked about this a little bit on an episode a couple weeks ago. It was part of uh, of an episode that included sus chords. So just to squash the debate right up front, yes, the major third in a sus chord sounds awesome. Oh, wait, I thought we were going to say no. Oh, minor third, though, no. No minor third. No minor third. Or passing note, but yeah. But a major third in a it voicing? Does. Yeah. Sounds great. Give him, give him something. Ooh, I love that sound. Yeah, and this one in particular because you got, you know, all fours. Perfect fourth, two perfect fourths, and a tritone, you know, an augmented fourth. Yeah. Root, not root shell pretty like yesterday. Root fourth, dominant seventh, major third. That sounds great. And, you know, for, for reference, go to the ultimate sus chord tune, Maiden Voyage, Herbie exactly. Hancock's, and you'll hear that all over that. Freddie Hubbard. Freddie Hubbard's all over the major third. Herbie's playing voicings with the major third. Yeah. Uh, it's good stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I think that normally now we, I think we did discuss this at another time too. That there is, uh, there, there's another sound which is great, 
and it doesn't matter if you call it a, a minor so I've, I've heard it matters it to a lot of people we get a lot of emails well i don't no, no, no but in terms of like the sound is i love this sound but that's a minor 11 that's a minor chord. 11 but you yeah. know what if you call it a, a minor sus who cares i, I mean, care well no no, no but it's still but if you play good i guess so but you know we're always saying like what you call it yeah it's better to kind of stick with the nomencl- nomenclature that people will understand but you know what if when we see that minor like like um a D minor seven sus four. We know to play this, but if it says D minor eleven and like that's in the melody or that or something, D minor thirteen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sus four. I mean, yeah, it's not entirely correct, but but um, it is what it is, right? It is what it is. I guess to me, you know, the sus four means that the four is in there. Like the third can also be in there. Yeah. So if it's a D seven sus four, right. That's a D seven with enough sharp can be in there for sure. But the emphasis on the the fourth in the chord as as a big part of it, and it, I I picture the composer wanting a little bit of ambiguity. Yeah. Uh, you know that sort of not major sound yeah. really, but it is uh, you know part of that family. Yeah. So when I see minor sus four, I just think like, well, you just could have. Is the seventh in there? Then yes. Yeah. Is the ninth in there? Then yes. Why didn't you just write a D minor eleven? Right. Yeah. Right. So I think yeah, and and, it, and wouldn't you say that. It's that tension between the third and the fourth. Yeah, it's that half step tension. Yeah, that's the important bit. That doesn't have that, and it's normally. I mean, you can certainly play it around there, but it's that. It's that ninth, you know, and yeah. even that. You know, hey, listen, and who am I to say what you want to do? How you notate your stuff? I'm, yeah, whatever. I, I, I actually is, don't care, but uh, for me, there's a clearer way to say it. It sounds like you do care. I do care. Okay. A little bit. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. I, I shouldn't take such hard stances you're, on this kind of stuff. A little, a little, a little, a little tension in your back there, buddy. I don't, I don't no, 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 no. But the the point is like the whole thing of notation and what we call things is important in terms of communicating. Sure. And, and when you're communicating on the bandstand, as in the, you know, maybe you're playing an open vamp over D, kind of an esoteric thing where the and this is a fun thing we've both done before, like trio or with 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 instruments. <laughs> That's what uh, we do. That's right. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> no, like you say you're vamping over something, and then we want to change the harmony. If we go, like, say, say it's like major, and then yeah. we go to that minor thing, we're communicating that by what we play. That says something to the horn player, yeah. minor 11, whether yeah, yeah. they know it's minor 11 or call it a, a, sound. A, a frosty froggy or whatever. But we never, you can communicate through music. When we communicate through notation or saying things, it is important to have a common language. I think so. Yeah. Well, back to the sus chord. So, yeah. okay, so we know that we can yeah, include the major third. No. Oh, sorry. Come on. <laughs> I was man. listening, man. <laughs> so, but he asks, you know, soloing strategies over the sus. So, yeah. first of all, the scale, and we talked about this before too, the scale that you would use over say, a D7 sus is actually just the D dominant scale. It's yeah. the Mixolydian sound. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. And a special little emphasis on the four, right? Yeah. So, that's your basic shapes and what's cool about the sus thing like if you play like a d7 sus for voicing you know yeah so a lot of triadic uh sounds come out of that voicing alone c g you know d again all of that stuff for some reason yeah it naturally just works really well over sus chord another thing that i always default to and this is again stolen straight from maiden voyage is if you play that d7 sus um, that you can, the, it doesn't say stay static on that G as the, you know, that sus four. Yeah. It goes both up and down, right? No, right. you could do it. You can right. keep... wait, wait, hold on. Right, well, let's, let's... <laughs> Got a lot happening over this there. This is awkward. <laughs> so trying to move this keyboard. You got a phone under there, too. So, like, uh, again, the key if, if you're on the C, you hear yeah. Herbie do this. Yeah. You know, so this is like uh, the sharp four. Yeah. But moving around yeah. here. And you've got the 13 in both of them, too. I think that's important. It's not necessary, but it's it's important part of that sound, right? So having that Lydian dominant sound, you know, you can you can signal that to the band. Working around that four. Yeah. So, you know, instead like typically if it were a seven chord, you might work around that third. Right. You know, you can do something but that's us. Yeah. All of that. And then man, it sounds so good if you're on that. And that's another kind of triad you're working in there, that E triad, basically, right? Uh, well, it's more like a um, like an E augmented. Oh, right. Right? Because you have E flat, or sorry, E flat augmented, E flat, G, and B. Mm-hmm. G triad. Okay. You know? But then back to the sus. You know? yeah. so, you, so you're really working around, like, so here I'm on F7 sus. 
So, you know, the kind of E flat major seven yep. sound over F. Yep. And then you, you what about sharp G that triad there. Yeah. Yeah, G triad works yeah. great. E flat. Yeah, even like melodically too. Yeah. Yeah, going between the E flat triad on an F seven sus and a yeah. G. It's almost like the 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 flexibility that the sus gives you. You know that sort of obvious tension points between the fourth, fourth, and the third. Yeah. Um, but that that sharp four as well. But the sharp four too yeah. gives you another place to go. Now you've got three places to kind of shift around, especially the tunes. And he was asking about you know the tunes, and I was the same one popped in my head. Of course, Maiden Voyage would be a great example of this. It's the classic. But you'll hear Freddie Hubbard, Herbie, like when they solo on it, and then many different versions. And we're thinking about the original version from the Bluno record, um, using those triadic, you know, approaches, but also that sharp 11 to the regular fourth to the major third and playing around with that melodically. Yeah. You know? Herbie does that too on uh, one finger snap. Mm. You know, he, he plays around with that sharp oh, four right. sound on some of those. That's chords. another good one for susses. It's a great yeah. one for susses. I was just thinking of another approach and, and there's going to be many more we won't have time to cover today, but another important one for sus uh, for me has always been thinking about um, them as kind of minor Dorian, uh, up from a fourth up so like over a c yeah. sus seven would be like a g minor nine over c you know totally. which you could say is a c 13 you see these spelled out like that sometimes yeah. g minor g, g minor nine over c yeah and i like i mean there's not always that i want to see them spelled out like that but if the function of it is in terms of like the melody or how you're improvising or even how you're doing voicings fits it is nice to put that um, G minor nine, because that's a specific kind of thing. It gets me of thinking of F more than anything. Like mm -hmm. I'm in the key of F. Yep. yep. You know, these are some F triads. Yeah. But how do you go about that? Like deciding in that case if you would put it as C thirteen sus four versus G minor nine slash chord over C. Would, I think the melody always takes precedent. Mm -hmm. What's going on there? How I think about it melodically, but I, I lean towards sus chords. I lean towards the simplest looking um, mm -hmm. chord symbol. Got it. So I'll stay away from slash chords before I'll just put C7 sus. And I might not even put C13 sus unless I want to be that specific about right, it. Right, right. So Good. another cool thing, here's a, here's a, some secret sauce that I like to use on sus chords. Oh, come on now. On, uh, Get that duck sauce on that egg roll. Come <laughs> on, man. <laughs> These work great on 2-5-1s, specifically on tritone substitution. So if we're in a 2-5-1 in G. You know, A minor 7, D7. G major seven, classic two five. You know your tritone sub, of course, is A minor seven, A flat seven. Yeah. There's a little Lydian dominant sound, and then G major seven. Yeah. Ah, but if you if that tritone sub, A minor seven, you make it a sus. Ooh. Yeah. There's that because it's like a G flat major seven over A flat. Yeah. Everything wants to resolve while the bass note goes down a half step. Yeah. Everything else wants to go up. That's great. So it's really like. Like if you can find the right voicing, which I'm having a hard time here, it's because I don't know what the massive the key station for <laughs> M audio is not fun, does not spark joy. But yeah. Like it gives you those those slick. Again, even you can think about it as like E flat minor seven. Yeah, you yeah, know. yeah. Well, you know what I think is great about that too is like that. You know, because the tritone sub is always a little bit of like a departure. It it has the same function in terms of the dominant and and where you're going coming from a half step up instead of five one, which is a very strong kind of resolution harmonic movement. But making it sus gives it like you're kind of going to another dimension for a quick minute. You're going a little further away than even a sub. And it's it's I mean, look, this the sus sound is to me is such an optimistic sound. It is a dominant sound in that it's unresolved. But it has so much like just happiness and optimism. I mean, is that it corny? No, it has a that? very optimistic sound, yeah. and I just love the, I love again, like that. It's that modern. It's mod. It's like a mo modernity. Is that a word? Yeah, it's like it's a dominant chord, but it's not at all harsh. It's bright. It is. Um, I love that sound. Yeah. Can I get the key station back? Because I got I got a little bonus way. Because I freaking gladly, man. I think <laughs> take it. <laughs> man, we are a well-oiled machine here. Um, I was just going to add one little bonus way to use sus chords. And this is the Adam Manis special. I've seen him do it several times compositionally. So that's like if you're key of F, be, be key of anything. Key of, we're going to go down to the F major, right? But no, we're going to go. Oh, my God. This guy never quits. 
I do one so cheesy vamp one time. No, it's and I killer, never man. I, I love it. I love it. So you're going down. Instead of resolving on the one, you're going down a whole step. So you're at, you're at the dominant seventh as your know, E flat as yeah. the root, and it's straight sus. And this is definitely what I hear is like a B flat minor seven. Totally. B I mean, flat minor nine over E that's flat. That's really the harmony you're borrowing yeah. from that minor four. But it. But then when you go back to here, it's 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 a it's a very separate area, but it's a very easy resolution back because you never totally figure out lose what that tonic. You think you would. Cause... What? Man, you don't have to tell me. I overuse this thing all the time. <laughs> yeah. So that's the Adam Man is special there. Come you on. get it. You know. Cool. Well, thanks everybody for uh, joining us. Thanks for thanks for coming back, Pete. I know. I man. think we scared everybody. Well, you don't have with the, the, the last twenty three hours and uh, forty minutes. We we were we were lost, but now we're found. <laughs> Uh, this is great. Um, don't forget, for a limited time, you'll hear it. Listeners can subscribe to the Oxford American for only 25 bucks. Visit OxfordAmerican.org forward slash YHI to subscribe today. Also, don't forget about uh, you'll hear it.com. It's yep. totally changed. I don't know if you knew that. No, I know it. But I was integral to the change. We've uh, <laughs> we've incorporated our awesome blog, our you'll hear yes. blog, into the awesome podcast. So there's so much information over there about jazz, jazz piano, theory, harmony, all that stuff. It's, Look up the articles. Like, there's videos. There's yeah. Also, the podcast episodes, of course, and, and leave us a message. It's leave totally a, TMI a, over there. It is. It's TMI, but we're, we're rolling with Man, it. Man, I'm proud of it. I'm I think proud it, of it, too. I think it looks good. It's some good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, till uh, tomorrow. Okay.